Hello, welcome to the first in the series of demonstrations of Accounting 211 problems. This problem is going to be a demonstration of Exercise 111. And this is the first, so I'm going to go over some overview things that I might not always go through as we have subsequent problems. This will take about 30 minutes. Uh, should be able to come back and view whatever you miss now if you don't have a full 30 minutes but you probably need 30 minutes to, um, to complete the, the viewing for this. Okay, so in exercise 111, we're looking at the accounting equation and we're um, recording or setting up accounting transactions so that they fit along the accounting equation. So the book refers you to looking at page 18, exercise 1.9, and producing something for exercise 111 that's pretty close to that exhibit. Now, I've had to abbreviate some here, and I want to make you aware of what it is that I abbreviated. The C stands for cash. The A, accounts receivable. The E, equipment. AP is accounts payable. GC is gold capital. GW is G withdrawals or gold withdrawals. R is revenue, E is expense. You may be wondering, did I just come up with a new way to do equal signs? The answer is no. Technically, in accounting, the left side does not equal the right. The left side is identical to the right. Let me explain what, what's different. If I have $100 in my pocket, and you have $100 in the bank, we have things that are equal but they're not identical. We have $200 worth of money. That's different than this. Here, what's on the left are assets valued at 100, in, in this example I'm constructing, and a financial interest equal to 100, where we break down that 100 by who's got the first right. Is it the creditor, in which case it'll be accounts payable, or is it the owners, in which case it'll be some combination of the other four. Now, as we tackle Exhibit 111, it's not going to be $100. We don't know how it's going to work out yet. I'm going to do the first half, problems uh, or transactions A through E. I'm going to erase the data we put in the first half. I'm going to do the second half of the problem, F through J. And then we're going to total it up and be finished. Transaction A in Exercise 111. The owner in this case, Lena Gold, invests $50,000 of cash and $10,000 of equipment into her business. The capital A refers to the lower case A in your problem. Okay, using this accounting equation, this big transaction um, spreadsheet, we're going to first take the $50,000 and record it as cash. She also contributed equipment valued at $10,000. We're going to show that recorded as equipment. Now we've got $60,000 on the left and nothing on the right. That's not possible in accounting. It turns out that gold invested $60,000. This was not revenue where she invested this money in exchange for work, and it's certainly not money going out. It doesn't involve the creditors, so I was just able to um, remove the possibility that we would increase accounts payable, which would be the creditors, Gold withdraws because she didn't take any money out. Revenue because she didn't put the investment in in exchange for work. And expense because there's not assets going out in exchange for work. To come back to it, this means gold capital goes up $60,000. Let's consider where we are. We have an accounting equation now that shows 60,000 in assets, 
50,000 in cash, 10,000 in equipment. The accounting equation also shows 60,000 in gold capital. They're in balance and must be because we're talking about the same stuff. In transaction two, the company spends $1,600 during the month for rent expense. They set office space for the month. Office space for the month is an expense. Office space for next month and beyond could be something we would call prepaid rent. All right? What happened? We had cash go down $1,600 because we paid for the rent. What about the right? Well, it's an expense. The definition of expense, according to me, very close to what's in the book, but maybe a little shorter and more practical, is expense, it represents assets of any type, cash or any other type of asset, given up to generate revenue. Now students occasionally ask me, do you have to use the parentheses like this? Sometimes I use carrots and the question comes up, do you have to use carrots? The answer is no. You could be perfectly comfortable using the minus sign if you'd like. My problem is I mistake the minus sign sometimes after I've done it for a smudge on the page. Whatever it is that you're using to demonstrate minus, it very clearly um, has to show up. Finally, let me show you something that's a little bit different than exercise 1.9 and make sure you're aware of it. And I call it exercise 1.9. I'm referring to exhibit 1.9 on page 18. My apologies for the, for the, for the um, spoken typo. GW gold withdraws, according to page 18, would be subtracted from the right side of the accounting equation. Also, expenses would be subtracted. I don't like that. It's OK. You may do it without penalty. But especially for new accountants or new accounting students, I want you to see that you have to do exactly the same thing on the right as you do on the left. For example, in B, if you did it the way the authors did it, you would have had a minus on expense up here. You'd have had a plus down here. This would have left a negative on the left, a positive on the right. And while that would work mathematically, I didn't want to use that to illustrate the effects on the accounting equation this early. So I stand by my method. You're free to use the author's method too. In transaction C, the company purchased $12,000 of additional equipment and they don't have to pay for it for a while. In this case, 30 days. Okay? Equipment then, on the left side of the accounting equation, goes up $12,000. It may not be intuitive, but the creditors have the first right to this equipment. Why? Because the company we bought it from, in effect, loaned us money to buy the equipment. Therefore, if we don't pay them back, they've got the right to come get the equipment. So we're going to the right side of the accounting equation. Creditors' financial interest is going up. We're going to show accounts payable going up. You might wonder, why did I draw the identity sign there? And why didn't I draw it in the two above? Only because I wanted you to realize that this is the break. And I'm afraid that because I've got a small amount of board space, it might not have lined up properly. And you might have been concerned about what accounts it was or what columns it was that I was making go up. 
In transaction D, the company did $2,000 worth of work for a client and they immediately collected the money. Okay, when they immediately collected the money, $2,000 goes up in cash. Got to have something on the right go up. Revenue was uh, defined earlier by me as um, assets received in exchange for work. If it wasn't defined earlier by me that way, it was sort of defined in your book that way, and that's the definition I'm giving to it. So we have revenue also going up 2000 Let's look at transaction E. In transaction E, the company completed more work for a different client and it billed for the work for $7,000. Okay, the easy part, revenue goes up $7,000. The harder part, what type of property goes up if we haven't been paid yet? Well, remember, we're doing accounting for a business here, not for friends, neighbors, family, and stuff like that, although they could be clients too. If you look at real businesses out in the world and they accept accounts receivable so that they bill for work, they do the work in advance and then they bill for it. If these businesses last longer than a year, they're very good at this. They know who to go ahead and do work for in advance and who to say, no way, you have to pay us up front. So a promise from one of this business's clients is an excellent asset. It's not something I'm getting into too far in chapter one, but I wanna point out that this type of asset, accounts receivable from a good client, this is something that can be bought and sold in the open market. Banks buy and sell accounts receivable. So this is an asset. The asset is not cash, it's accounts receivable. Now, if I had all the board space I needed, I might have subtotaled every time I did a transaction to show you that the left side of the accounting equation and the right side of the accounting equation stay in balance. But I'm very limited in board space. In fact, I'm going to have to erase the board in just a minute so that I can begin the next five transactions. What I want to do then is total up these. And what we total up at the bottom of this, when I erase it, is going to be the top of the next page. Let's see if we stayed in balance. Cash totals 5,400. Accounts receivable totals 7,000. Equipment totals 22,000. The left side then, so far is 34,400. This is just a check figure. I'm going to erase it in a minute. On the right, in accounts payable, we have 12,000. In gold capital, we have 60,000.
for revenue, we have 9,000. For expense, we have 1,600. Ah, I knew I made a mistake. I could tell. I was looking at the left side, looking at the right side, saying these don't match up. My problem here is that I misadded the cash. So the cash was 50,000 minus 1,600 made it 48,400 plus two made it 50,400. Let's try 79,400 as the check figure on the left. And when you add together 12,000, 60,000, and 9,000, and then subtract 1,600, you also come up to 79,400. As a check figure. Now I realize because of the limited board space, things are kind of rolling off the edge of the page, particularly the 1600 in expenses. But as we come to the next section of the problem, let's go ahead and get these totals at the bottom so that they're lined up right at the top. Okay, we have a fresh board. Let's keep going. In transaction F, the company purchased additional equipment for $8,000. Cash. Notice then that the cash is a negative. It's going down. Meanwhile, equipment is going up 8000 Transaction G, the company pays its office assistant. They pay the office assistant $2,400 cash for the month.
We have cash going down on the left side, and we have capital going down or equity going down through a minus 2400 on the right side. Now something else happens in transaction H with regard to transaction E. Back in E, the company did work and it billed $7,000. Well, here we're going to collect 5,000 of the 7,000. Well, as we collect 5,000 of the 7,000, cash goes up 5,000. We can't record more revenue. If we do, we're going to double count. This $9,000 already, already includes all $7,000 that we build, including this $5,000. Rather, the accounts receivable goes down. If you look at what H did then, one asset cash goes up, one asset accounts receivable goes down. In transaction I, the company paid $12,000 related to transaction C. Transaction C, which you have to rewind back to the older part of the um, video, or if you've been taking notes along in your paper and you go back up and you look at what you did in C. This involved equipment going up 12,000, accounts payable going up 12,000. Well, if we're paying 12,000 cash, cash goes down 12,000. Let's be careful though. We didn't lose any equipment. We, you know, the, all the $12,000 worth of equipment is still with us, so we don't reduce equipment. Rather, we paid some of the bill. In fact, we paid it all. So we're gonna make this 12,000 go down to zero, and we're gonna do it by showing negative 12,000 under accounts payable. One more transaction, and then we'll total up. For transaction J, the, com the, the company's owner withdraws 500 for personal use. A short note about the owner withdrawing money. I tell students that a company can only do three things with its assets. It can use one asset to buy another. For example, it can use cash to buy equipment. It can use the asset to generate revenue. That is, it could spend on an expense like salaries or rent to generate revenue. The third thing it can do is pay the money back to its owners, which is what happened here in J. Well, all we need to do now to finish up the problem is total it up and make sure the totals balance. The total cash is 32,500. The total accounts receivable 